not all carbohydrates are created equal different carbohydrate containing foods affect blood sugar differently the glycemic index is a measure that ranks carbohydrates in foods according to how they affect blood glucose level a numeric value from 1 to 100 is assigned to each carbohydrate rich food with glucose that is a sugar assigned a value of 100 the GI system divides carbohydrate foods into three categories. Low GI foods are 55 or less. Medium GI foods is between 56 and 69. And high GI foods are 70 and above. Foods with a low GI value, that is 55 or less, are more slowly digested and absorbed causing a slow rise in blood glucose less insulin is needed to combat this gradual rise in blood sugar foods with a medium gi is between 56 and 69 causes a medium rise in blood sugar and a proportionate amount of insulin is released to combat the rise in blood sugar foods with a high GI value that is 70 and above tend to get absorbed quickly causing a faster rise in blood sugar with more insulin released to combat this sudden rise. A great analogy to explain the concept of GI is this. Imagine what happens when it drizzles as opposed to when it pours. A gentle rain or a drizzle allows a garden or rain harvest to utilize the rainwater better. The water level does not rise and there is no flooding. The same effect happens when you eat foods with a low GI value. Now, sugar is digested and absorbed in the body slowly leading to a gradual increase in the blood sugar which the body can use better. On the contrary, think of a time when it pours. There are floods and most water is wasted and runs off to drains. Only a small percentage gets utilized. When you eat foods with high GI value, your body digests and absorbs them quickly, causing a sudden rise in blood sugar levels and your pancreas must pump large quantities of insulin to combat it. Insulin is a hormone that helps get the blood sugar or the glucose from the blood to the cells. Over time, when you eat more refined carbohydrates and your body pumps out a lot of insulin, the cells in your body starts to resist it. This increases the probability of you becoming insulin resistance, which may potentially lead to type 2 diabetes. A 2019 systematic review and meta-analysis by Mohammad Ishraq Zafar et al. titled Low Glycemic Index Diets as an Intervention for Diabetes looked at 54 randomized controlled trials in both adults and children. The analysis concluded that low GI diets were effective in reducing fasting glucose, total cholesterol and BMI, suggesting that these diets are useful for people with pre-diabetes, insulin resistance and diabetes. Other high quality studies and reviews in the past decade suggest that eating a low GI diet can lessen the risk of diabetic complications and increase life expectancy. A low GI diet is also useful for people with no medical issues in keeping their blood sugar normalized and as a weight loss intervention. Limitation of glycemic index. The GI measure can only suggest how high blood sugar will rise when you eat a given carbohydrate rich food. However, it does not tell us how long the blood sugar will remain high. This is where the concept of glycemic load comes in. According to Wikipedia, the glycemic load GL of food is a number that estimates how much the food will raise a person's blood glucose levels after eating it. One unit of glycemic load approximates the effect of eating one gram of glucose. Glycemic load combines both the quality and the quantity of a given carbohydrate food. The formula for glycemic load is as follows. GI multiplied by the amount of carbohydrate divided by 100. 
Now let's compare two foods as an example. So there's a large banana and the serving size is 120 grams. Its GI is 50 and carbohydrates in, a, in it are 25 grams. Therefore its glycemic load is 50 multiplied by 25 divided by 100 and it comes to 12.5. And there is a watermelon with the same serving size of 120 grams. Its GI is high which is 72 but it has only 6 grams of carbs. Therefore its glycemic load will only be 4. GL of watermelon is much less than a banana because even though watermelon's glycemic index is 72, it's mostly water. The carb content in it is only 6 grams compared to 25 grams of a large banana. GL of a given serving size of a carbohydrate food can also be categorized as low GL is less than 10, medium GL is between 11 and 19 and high GL is 20 plus. Now that we understand GL and GI concepts, let me provide you four key suggestions to lower both. First, select foods that have a GI of 55 or less. Including foods with a low GI will surely help keep your sugar normalized. Now consider this list of 51 common foods and the respective GI value. Start by eating a lot of vegetables in your diet. Not only they provide tons of micronutrients, most vegetables are very low on the GI index. Of course, try and minimize potatoes and corn which are the only vegetables with a high GI. Fruits also have a low GI and can be part of your diet. Dairy products also have a low GI as well and can be part of a nutritionist diet. And the healthiest category of all dals and beans of all types. They are one of the most nutrient dense foods and should be a major part of your calories especially if you are a vegan or a vegetarian. At the same time it's okay to include a few medium GI foods. Foods like bread, potatoes, pasta, roti, rice can be part of your diet but it's a good idea to limit the portions and how often you eat them. Second, minimize or ideally eliminate all sugary beverages like fruit juices, soft drinks, sugar, sweetened iced teas and so forth. Large percentage of calories from added sugar comes from soda, juices and other sugary drinks. These sugary beverages are loaded with many empty calories and have played a major role in the obesity epidemic. Therefore, it's good to replace them with healthy zero calorie beverages like black coffee, ginger tea, apple cider vinegar, moringa tea, green tea and so forth. Third is reduce your intake of sweet snacks like biscuits, pastries, cakes, donuts, Indian sweets, pizzas and burgers. Guys, the GI and GL of bakery foods like cakes, pastries, biscuits and other refined flour products is high. These refined and processed foods contain many empty calories and can cause insulin resistance when eaten in excess. Therefore, it's a good idea to minimize their consumption. If you have to eat them, opt for the healthier versions like whole wheat digestive biscuits, homemade pizzas, burger buns made from whole wheat flour and and so forth. Fourth, always combine high GI foods with proteins and healthy fats. Combining protein and healthy fats with high GI foods can slow down gastric emptying leading to an overall low to moderate GI value of the entire meal. For example, boiled fusilli pasta has a GI of 61. But when you add cheddar cheese and perhaps some canned tuna in your pasta, the meal's overall GI is reduced to 27. So it's a good idea not to eat carbohydrates by themselves. Always combine them with a protein source and healthy fats.